Fortnite from Epic Games. Yeah. Uh, last time we talked about it on the podcast with JV, we talked a lot about the tutorial and building up and how it's kind of overwhelming out of the gate. So, Renner, I'm curious, after you spent more time with it, what is, not necessarily the end game, but what does the advanced game look like? Uh, where are the strengths? Where are the weaknesses? Yeah, a lot of the same, I'll say. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> there's not a lot of variety. It, it sounds like a really complex game, but there really isn't much to it when you really boil it down to the gameplay that's there. Yeah. So what is it? What is Fortnite? It is a sandbox scavenging resource management, uh, camp building, fort building combat game. Minecraft Orcs Must Die. With co-op. Yeah. Four player co-op. Uh, yeah. Tim Sweeney, I think, called it Minecraft meets, meets that. Yeah. Um, but... So you're doing all these things. Basically, when you land in a in a in an area with your team in tow, if you have you usually have three people with you, right? Um, you land there, and the first thing you want to do is go find uh, this device that's going to kind of tame the storm that's making these these zombies, right? Yeah, and uh, that means you have to scavenge over this kind of open world area, and it's they're fairly sizable. I don't know you you'll take some time to get across it, but you can all scatter and kind of I don't know see most of the map in a matter of minutes right uh but you're going into houses stuff like that you're you're looting through trash going into toilets uh doing everything you can to get resources to build stuff that you're going to need you're going right. to need like wood metal stone uh for your building of the camps but you're also going to need all sorts of different things to build bullets and weapons and all that stuff right um as you go through this because once the action starts it's relentless and it goes on for a long time and is it fun yeah, so once you find your little device, you activate it, you build a camp around it, and basically that's, it's really easy. Basically, you just have, um, you hit the B button on, on Xbox, that's what I'm playing it on, and it brings up an option to build a wall. You hit the RB button, that turns into a floor or a ceiling. So you can build it very quickly, you just throw it down and you see it just start assembling. It's very yeah. Disney Infinity-esque, Minecraft-esque, right? Like, it's just instantly there. Um, that is going to fortify your this little thing that you're trying to protect because these zombies called husks are coming after that thing. And there's these little storm pockets that you'll see on the ground that will, you know, lightning will shoot out and all of a sudden there's like a swarm of them coming at you. They're slow moving. There's not a lot of variety to them, even in, I'm what, 30 hours into this thing, I think yeah. now. Mm -hmm. um, but you should be able to manage it. And it's kind of got a horde mode kind of, feeling to it in that it's just wave after wave after wave of enemies and the game outside of that core gameplay like all the menus all the stats all the upgrades after 30 hours does it feel more natural can you navigate it does it feel good it is the busiest like yeah. hud screen i've ever seen in a game i mean there's tons of stuff going on at any given time it's it's a little maddening in that you're still not used to it no and and i mean even in the menus when when you're out of the map it's like you got your survivors to take care of. You got all these, you know, different camps of people to take care of and level up. Yeah. You're not just leveling up yourself. You're leveling up like everyone that you 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 uh, come across. You know that you open up loot crates and you'll get survivors in there. And it's like, okay, this one's purple. He's better. Or I'm gonna slot him in as a survivor or technician over here or something. And it, it's there's a lot of depth there, but the variety doesn't back up that depth yet, right? And they they're calling this a closed beta right now. <laughs> Which is really misleading if you buy it at retail. You can buy it on a store shelf, which mm -hmm. is, it, I mean, we had discussions internally. We're like, well, what does that mean? How different is that from early access where technically people could buy it? Like, is it more misleading if it's like, oh, it's just a label on a box on a shelf. Yeah. People are still going to pick it up, not knowing that it's kind of still in progress. So mm -hmm. I went and uh, looked at a package in the store. And yeah. nowhere on the front does it say anything about it being early access or uh, closed beta. And then on the back, it says early access pack. And it just lists like a bunch of items you're getting. But it doesn't say the game's like not finished yet, it not in closed beta or whatever. I don't know what this means anymore, by the way. Yeah. Like this whole <laughs> alpha beta stuff, like I don't it doesn't matter anymore. Well, now Dan's alpha. It, it, well, definitely. But <laughs> but the term but yeah, the gaming terms for it have become increasingly useless, right? Like a beta used to actually be a beta. And now a beta is just like a, a stress test in most in most cases. Mm -hmm. and, and I understand that part, but when it comes crazy. to selling betas no. on retail shelves, yeah. that's the new layer of, oh, it's just game on. Everyone, already, nothing means anything anymore. We're I in thought. that new frontier. We have games that are in early access for like four or five years. 
We have games yep. that never come out of early access. Richard Gary is fantastic game, Shroud of the Avatar, coming out of early access anytime <laughs> soon here. <laughs> but it's going to be free to play next year when it's officially done then, right? That's so weird. It is. Is it just, I'm trying to think, Does has Microsoft endorsed that strategy as well? Because even like Tomorrow yes. Children from Q Games, they also got out of the gate with like, oh, this costs money, right. but then eventually we'll make it free to play. Which Fable is, Fortune is the exact same is that, way. Yeah. It's a horse <laughs> strategy. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Uh, I don't understand it, but... I'm down on the game like, as I talk about it. The gameplay, especially, it's just it feels like I'm doing the same thing over and over and over, going into the same areas over and over and over. And there's four different zones, but man, it takes time to get to that second zone. You got to go but, through but mission the, after mission after mission. And some of the missions you take say complete this zone twice, like this nine star zone twice. Uh, so it's like, man, that's that's over an hour just that, for that one mission, and I need to do four to get to the next tier in this area. It's it's maddening how much is there. It's cool huh. if you want bang for your buck. I mean, there's tons of game there, and I am addicted to the loops okay. of the loot. Like, okay. the stuff I'm getting. Like, I want the better weapons. I want the the better survivors. I want to, you know, send people out on these these scavenging well, missions. Well, then the menus are working. So, Well, I mean, no, because it's oh. still like, oh, my God, I come here, and it's not like I'm done in a matter of seconds. It's like, okay, I got a bunch of stuff I got to take care of. So does it feel like a chore that you're grinding, or does it feel fun? Parts of it feel like a chore. And then, uh, also, and then the gameplay itself, I just want more variety, right. whether that's in enemies, how they even attack. You yeah. know, it'll just always, the storm will always be like right in front of me. And it's like, they could come from over here to the south or, you know, like all vectors. But See, some of the zombies are baseball players and they throw baseball, they, which is pretty cool. They throw bones. You talk about the oh, color coded rarity and survivors. Is this like a, a mobile gacha kind of system where you want it, to get the five star <laughs> legendary guy yeah it, it, it totally feels oh, like everything's that. in this game I, I every know. system God. to make Whoa. money is going in this game in some capacity right. they have they have loot chests and then they have loot pinatas I mean, that you hit with a shovel literal loot pinata. well that's yeah. some, it's that's going some to be self. free to play they're gonna they're gonna milk you for it yeah. in, in other ways i just All wish right. they milk me in a cleaner way i wish the yeah, milking milk, laboratory milk is clean so you know milk yeah. is clean that's right dan for the last time but if you're looking for like a four player co op game that's a little different, and has a lot of depth. <laughs> 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 On Switch, preferably. Oh, mm. Don't play that one yet, yeah, from not. what I'm hearing. Uh, uh, so uh, you, re we, you would recommend it? Yeah, I do. I, I recommend it. Uh, again, I don't know what's going to happen next year when it goes free to play, what that's going to mean for the loot systems and, and how it plays and all that. Uh, but what's there is, is pretty satisfying. It's just very repetitive. So. Um, you know, I don't think this is a game you're going to want to sit down and play 12 hours each day. It's hmm. going to start all feeling the same after a while. But I've been going at it three, four hours a day, and that, that seems about right for me. And then I'm like, okay, I now I am feeling like this is starting to tax tax me a little bit. So, yeah, I'll um, be damned. But it's cool. Thank you so much for watching this excerpt from the Game Informer Show podcast. You can subscribe to the audio version and listen to new episodes airing every Thursday. We cover big games on the horizon, games that we've just reviewed. We have long-form developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So check it out every Thursday.